Hey guys, this is Game of Cow. Welcome back to Toho, the Genius of Savros. Last time we knocked out some dudes on the mountain, got ourselves the Muscle Belt 2 from the Earthquake Catfish that we didn't see before, and got a couple of Yukari Sister kills, which gave us a whole million tons of experience that basically let me kill the stage a lot quicker than I was anticipating. So that was good. Uh, obviously less killing is decent because it just means that we don't take as much time doing stuff. So, this time we're going to be talking to Katniko and Swako and unlike usual I'm not actually going to show party setup here. You can see by the uh, pictures on the right who I have in my party but other than that, yeah, I'm not actually going to show that off this time because it would completely destroy the, uh, sub well, not even surprise, but it would completely destroy the fight here, like, spoiler-wise. So, yeah. Well, no, we've, we've kind of seen some sort of indication of, uh, at least the power of the culprit, so there is that. So yeah, the Greater Tengu are allowing us to go on. Although there were some weak Tengu that tried to attack us, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, it would. They wouldn't let us just do whatever if the if the Tengu were actually involved. So. Yep, that's basically how Tengu works. So. Perhaps they want to eliminate the instant. Well, maybe. But basically, the Tengu are not really anyone to suspect at this point. Not from the moon. Yeah, how do you figure that one then? What is that? Um, I was trying to heaven. Yeah, we actually, when I said we've gone through all the main games, technically we have, but we haven't gone through the uh, 0.5 game of uh, Scarlet Weather Rhapsody yet, so. Well, yeah, but they may temporarily reside here or something. I don't know. Enemy completely unrelated to Horai, perhaps. But we really don't have much of an idea as to what's going on with it, huh? Yeah. Tenshi could well be behind this, but we need to keep going and confirm, as is indeed going to be the case. So... Can't go on Suwako here. Weather, weather's pretty much always good at the top of the Yokai Mountain, right? Ah, so nice. <laughs> they are so happy, aren't they? Suwako's hat is really kind of creepy in this game <laughs> because it has its own animations and everything. As I mean, it's the same for a lot of stuff that way, but uh, you know, it seems to have that in. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Fighting again. <laughs> They're so bored. They are really, really bored. Also, cute Suwaka face is cute. Again, the the sprite work in this game is fantastic. <laughs> Indeed, we should be. So, yeah. Uh-oh. What are they planning? Don't have to be so acidly. Ooh. Yeah, there's... Oh, that's not very nice. Uh-huh. Okay. Be less fun if they find out. Find out what exactly? Yeah. About that. Here's the troublemakers. Uh-huh. That happy Swaka face? Uh, Swaka is just adorable in this game. Just not quite as adorable as Kaguya, but still pretty adorable. <laughs> Indeed, you have returned, Sanai. And you are definitely a lot stronger than you were. But, yep, yeah, indeed. Why would the send it? That is a good question. Lady Asaka, yep. Yeah. Referring by some uh, surnames, and yeah, they were indeed pretty good. Uh huh. Some had evident bruises. Uh oh. 
Found out. <laughs> you can't hide that. Uh, <laughs> Satori, please. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> uh huh. I'm sure you were something. <laughs> smug son, are you smug? <laughs> oh dear. So yeah, having to beg for forgiveness now. Blah blah blah. I'm sure you will. <laughs> and of course, lots of just just light-hearted banter as you would expect from uh, from you know Gensokyo, right? And Reimu is just like, "Oi, shut up! Remember what we're here for." <laughs> yeah, that is indeed right. So sinister music time. Yep. Instant is why we're here. We're trying to resolve it, but we've gone all the way around Gensokyo and nobody's been the culprit. So, yeah. We're gonna get straight to the point and ask. And. Yeah, of course. We kind of, kind of knew that. But yeah, there's a good reason why it's not them. Because, as they say, they, they came to Gensokyo to get faith so they would stay powerful, right? And, yeah, they get faith from Yokai. So, there's no reason why they would harm Yokai. Wouldn't make any sense. Uh huh. Can't be the culprits, indeed. Ah, uh, you're just. Jealous of them, of their trying being good and yours not, Remu. But Biakaran over here has something else to uh, to ask, of course. I'm pretty sure you know something that you're not telling us here. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm fairly sure they would be, and uh, uh oh, they're being. <laughs> that face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're looking shifty. I. See, this is. I, I, I guess what's happening here is that they're having a. The, you know, like, under their breath sort of conversation with themselves, but... <laughs> oh dear, the argument stuff is gonna happen. That was uncalled for. <laughs> oh dear. Uh-huh, of course it is. So what? <laughs> And yeah, that's it. They they argue way too much. Probably just as much as the party that we have here. Uh huh. Well, a, a little bit. I'm sure they do. Yeah, whatever makes you say that, Raymu. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Uh, they are hiding something, and I mean, we knew that because, uh, uh, what's it called? That uh, observer's like omnipotence sort of thing. Uh, sure, <laughs> give it a try. That, yeah, it's kind of, kind of it. At this point, Greater Yokai have kind of shown a lot of resistance, and yeah, no mind reading for you. Ouch! <laughs> ah, damn it, Remu. <laughs> so mean indeed. Yeah. Power will not work because they already know about it. Uh huh. Closed off the hearts. Yeah, that's true. They do because they do run the underground uh, nuclear reactor and stuff. So. Huh. The problem is here, if they're not the culprits, what are they hiding? Or why are they hiding anything from us? 
And why would they have closed their minds off in the first place? It's actually a good point, yeah. Byakuin is like the Sherlock of this game. She's super good at all the uh, determining everything, which is neat, actually. It's, it's nice that there's at least one level-headed character here. Uh, yeah, well, that's true as well, but even so, yeah, very suspicious. Uh-huh. So, yeah, we basically are going to have to fight them. So that's going to be it. We have to fight, apparently. Yeah, I guess. Raymond's already beaten you before, though, right? Uh-huh. Except Sana isn't actually involved in this fight, but sure. Neither's Reimu, so there we go. But yep, yeah, we're gonna have to fight and everybody's all ready and geared up for it, so... Including Marissa with a broom now, actually. It's neat seeing the slightly different uh, sprites for people here, you know, because they're facing up rather than to the side. Yep, the festival between gods and humans. And, of course, the Honor Bashira comes straight in, and that's that. So, this fight. <laughs> oh, this fight. If you don't know how to cheese this fight, you're gonna have a hell of a time. So, yeah. Let's just put it that way. So, we are going to run with Hyper Trigger on to Saki. You see, Saki is actually using a really interesting sort of setup here, but it makes sense when you actually know what we're going to do. So, Alice just needs to Little Legion. Alice has a reasonably, a reasonably high chance of dying this turn, but I've actually given her enough resistance stuff so that, so that she shouldn't die this turn. But... She used to die first turn every time in my uh, my practice run to this. Except this time, uh, Kanako didn't actually do the attack that I was expecting. Usually she does an Onobashiro attack, which is a really, really powerful column-based move. That even when shielding and with strike resistance, Alice takes uh, 100 damage for it. So it'll kill pretty much anyone that it hits. But... Yeah, usually Alice would take like 200 damage from that, and then Suako, if I didn't have resistance to the water and earth attacks that she uses, would just kill me in one hit. So, the way this fight goes is that, kind of like Kaguya, they, the pair of them are vulnerable to status of sorts, except these two are vulnerable to much more crippling status conditions than the previous fight, so that's kind of cool, and what do I want to do with Alice here? I'm not used to Alice surviving this long. Uh, let's just go on Horror Idol, I guess. Probably won't make a difference, but we'll do it anyway, just to be sure. So we're going to have Illusional Misdirection come in, and yep, Kanako can be affected by instant death. Yeah! Also, oh, that might hurt. Not really. Okay. Oh, it didn't actually work this time. Oh, okay. That's the first time that I failed that. So, Suwako is actually vulnerable to petrify, but it didn't actually work this time. So, that's kind of cool. Even, even though they are vulnerable to status conditions, they won't always trigger, which is why I had Satoru use Evil Eye as well as... Uh, uh, Sakuya uh, using her um, illusional misdirection. I used to have the um, Phantom in the Night one, the the new new version that we got. But it the one practice run, I think I had four runs of this, and uh, once it didn't actually cause instant death. So the Evil Eye, which is from maxing out uh, the I tree for Satori can also do instant death. Uh, the reason Sakura is using a knife, apart from just attack speed, is because of Castador bite here. So, or ca ca it's Catastor, I guess. It's a weird word to say. Basically, it's one of the nice uh, 
attack skills that can inflict petrify. So we'll run with that as well. And uh, really, it's pretty smooth sailing as soon as you get that petrify off. So I'll actually show what Scan does here as well, because why the hell not at this point? Uh, may as well Little Legion just to make sure that nobody gets uh, debuffed or anything here. Oh, it didn't work there either. Ouch. Well, regardless, she is, uh, she is vulnerable to uh, slash attacks, which is why we're using them here. So that's kind of neat. She also regens in Earth, which is unfortunately what the land is right now, but now we'll just try and petrify every turn. It shouldn't be too bad, even if she does stay alive here, because uh, honestly... Yeah, she isn't going to do too much damage to us. I just remembered I didn't actually show Breathless Strikes before, but it's pretty much the strongest physical attack I have for uh, Satori at the moment, so that's what we've got here. I don't have the Learn Tree up very high, so it doesn't really do that much damage, but whatever. And I may as well go Mark Kick here as well. So, just a little bit of damage coming out. Uh, that attack can induce paralysis, so the iron rings are kind of annoying that way, but whatever. And there's the petrify. It should be noted that it is possible for uh, Soako to recover from petrify every turn, so there's a small chance that she'll recover from it, so you can't necessarily just auto this fight. She's also very resistant to magic attacks. Uh, she resists every element, but is weak to physicals. She's weak to all types of physical, so if you're using Notori for this fight, then do not use Element Bullet, because she will then resist your attacks, and it will not be fun. Uh, yeah, actually, we'll just stick with that. The reason I have Marissa as my commander here is that Marissa's Stardust Sanctuary can actually increase the damage that you do. 15% uh, every time you use a bomb, but you can only use it every uh, second turn, because it has one turn cooldown. So, whilst we wait for Slash of Eternity to come back here, we will uh, just go ahead and do some attacks, and uh, we'll use Stardust Sanctuary next time and get a whole bunch of stuff off. And all will be well with the world. So, uh, Satori's self-hypnosis fails now, but that's fine, so we'll get that going. Uh, meltdown, just to try and debuff her defense again. As you can see, debuffs can work on this, uh, this fight, but they're not necessarily the easiest of things to get, so... Don't rely on them too much, is all I'm trying to say. But yeah, we'll buff our damage input this turn, get some more power out of this. And this should get the kill. There we go. Nice. So, the reason why you want to set your party up that way is because this fight is an absolute ass if you don't. Basically, Kaneko is ridiculously powerful, humongously physically tanky, and uh, if she gets below one third HP, she uses Miracle of Earth and Sui, which will uh, basically heal both of them for about 6,000 HP. So that pretty much screws any chance of doing this fight normally. I tried to power through this fight not knowing that instant death was a, uh, a way around it, and uh, you can actually, if you... Uh, if you look up really old videos of stuff for me here, then you can actually find the original battle that I won with these guys, where basically the only reason I won is because Yomu got her last word and it insta-killed uh, Kanako. I didn't know that you could petrify Suwako either, so that kinda happened. But yeah, she has ridiculous power, and she's got Divine Barrier as well, I believe, so she takes less damage even from magic. So, unfortunately, it's really hard to take advantage of her weakness too. So, yeah, so many mixed feelings. <laughs> it felt good to take him out, but not really. Yeah. You guys got crushed because you're weak to status conditions. I 
think that's the only other time in the game where permanent status actually affects bosses. So, yeah, there is that. It's not just permanent, and because I've been, as we've been told already, instant death is a quick status. So, yeah. Alright, so, <laughs> nothing to reveal in the first place. Oh, that guy is gonna get snapped. <laughs> Oh dear. Yep, so they are not behind this incident and she's opened up her heart enough just to uh, just to confirm that she's not behind it. They are still hiding something, that is for sure. Uh huh. Well, yeah, we kinda knew it wasn't. But even so, <laughs> always off the mark. Yeah. Hmm. Gee, I wonder why that is. Well, yeah. If there's only one place left now, right? She is the only one left. So our final destination and totally the completion of this game will have to be in heaven, right? Time to go to heaven and blast her away. Yep. Yeah, let's do it. Let's master spark it, because why not? So, yep, yeah, we'll be leaving once again. And, uh, uh huh. Take care of blah blah blah. So, yeah, what is it that they're hiding exactly? Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. Should be feeling the same, yeah? So, basically. The only reason they haven't told us anything is because they want <laughs> a cute little girl to go on her journey. Oh man, you guys are just ridiculous. The only reason they haven't told us what's going on is because they want Sunai to, to train. <sighs> too bad, too bad. Uh-huh. I don't think so somehow, but sure, whatever. Watch <laughs> Oh my god. You are just ridiculous, Kanako, seriously. Kanako's among my least favorite characters in in all of Gensokyo, to be honest. Uh, what's up with that look there, Suwako? Seriously. But She's among my least favorite, if only because she is pretty much the biggest bitch in all of Toho. Uh, because she has started the incidents of like three games, directly or, or indirectly. She has started three of the game's incidents and is just... I don't know, like, <laughs> there's something about her that just doesn't sit right with me. Anyway... And now for, for some post-analysis stuff, because I really didn't want to spoil that fight before actually going into it, because honestly, that fight needs to be seen like properly. So both of these characters do have Divine Barrier, so if you have any exorcism that's good. Reimu and her free bomb commander spell can actually be quite good to go past that exorcism, uh, that Divine Barrier even. That might have actually done uh, helped us do more damage than Marissa helped us do in the end, but I could have just used Marissa like for two or three more times than I actually did there. I didn't really need to worry too much about a commander slot, so that's kind of what I did. But yeah, basically you can see Sawako resists everything except the physical elements, and Kanako resists all the physical stuff and is only weak to dark. She's actually very good against both light and earth. So yeah, plus 200 physical defense and 120 magic defense along with that 25% divine barrier blocking magic because magic is much more difficult to get exorcism on. Yeah, it's, it's not good as a combination for damaging her. And like I said, if you do manage to get her below a third of her 18,000 HP health, she just uses Miracle of Arts and Suri to heal a third of her health back. It's actually kind of ridiculous. So yeah, that 
that's a thing and you don't really want that to happen. So if you don't know about her instant death star weakness then I don't know how you're supposed to do this fight because it's kind of absurd. Also if the land goes to light, which I think she does do light attacks, but if the land goes to light then she gets regen in that, which is kind of annoying to say the least. So yeah, basically Kanako wrecks you every turn with massive physical hits that even Alice can't really tank, and uh, Sawako does uh, party-wide debuff stuff like Innovation for uh, it's a gra uh, Earth attack that uh, lowers your offensive stats, she has Acid Storm, the water AoE that lowers your um, defense stat. She has Sandstorm, which uh, she did use... Uh, did she use that first turn? I forget. But Sandstorm basically blinds you. It's a party-wide blind attack, so that can be really annoying. And um, she has her Iron Rings to paralyze you. And really, that's about all I remember from this fight, because I... Last, last time I did this fight without statusing them was probably about gonna show my age a bit here, but probably about five or six years ago at this point. It's kind of crazy actually to think about that. A uh, long time has passed since I first played this game. But yeah, uh, that's pretty much how this fight goes. So let's just show how I set myself up here. So I'm using the Hypnotic Barrier formation because that is the best formation to get induction boost from because every character in your party gets a 20% induction buff. Uh, Red Eyes, which is Raisin's formation, is a little bit easier to take some of the hits with but because uh, you could just defend the back, uh, not the back, the middle because the back only gets targeted 1% of the time. So that's quite nice, but the induction buff is only 15%. So, and the uh, the backmost character in this formation still only gets hit 10% of the time. So it was a better deal for me that way. So Biarcarun, I set up with the Karkatrice Crest for uh, petrification chance up, uh, launch earrings two because that gives a uh, lots more induction, and the muscle belt one just to get some extra HP in case things went wrong. Uh, Biarcarun's tier four scroll does give her 20% divine barrier, so she takes less damage anyway. So Satori was the one who ended up with muscle pet two. Uh, Yomu, I did find in my first practice round that Yomu got paralyzed by the Iron Rings and that was really annoying because it basically killed my damage output until she recovered because I didn't have any way of healing in that party. So yeah, she kind of got the Ghost Cat Tail instead. Uh, otherwise, uh, physical attack with the Strength Ring, critical hit rate with the Skill Ring, now that I know that it does that. Still gonna keep going on with that because that's kind of fun to know. And her tier 4 sword just because uh, that's what I have. So then Satori getting pretty much what's left. Uh, Sakia actually has the launch earrings one because she has the uh, status attacks to use, so there is that. Uh, but Satori got extra HP, a little bit of extra attacks so she could do some damage, and uh, Basically, I couldn't think of anything better than the score hairpin to give because I wasn't using anything else worthwhile. So, couldn't really do poison, obviously, and they're not weak to poison. So, yeah, that's pretty much the best I had. So, that's what I went with. Uh, Sakia, see, she was using a knife this time because, like I said, Castastor Bite was, uh, or Catastor Bite. I don't know how you say that, but the Petrify thing was. Uh, very good. You don't have to use a knife for this fight, but the knife tree actually has something beneficial for this uh, for this sort of style, so that's why I went with it. Uh, otherwise, magic rings so that she didn't run out of MP, extra attack with a rage choker because her actual attack stat is not very good with this formation, or this, this thing. Like 208 is nowhere near as good as she should be with her attacks, so you know, she needed a bit more power. And the best defense stuff that I could give. She 
did also have access to her shield this time, which was uh, something that came into play in my practice runs, believe it or not, that uh, I was able to defend against a couple of attacks because of that, so that was kind of fun. And then Alice as uh, basically Alice died turn one, like the first three times that I did this. Uh, First time, she didn't have enough strike resistance, so uh, the 25% is not enough for this fight. She uh, basically took 160 damage per attack from uh, from Kanako, because Kanako didn't use main cannon, she used the Honor Bashira move, which uh, it's a column attack, so Alice got hit twice for about 160 damage each time with 25% strike res, and she kind of died. So. I had to increase her strike res so that she could live that, and then she only took about 230 damage. Problem is, she used Little Legion, obviously, so that she could uh, cover everyone, and uh, Suako just goes, hey, I have an AoE, like multi-target move, so I'm going to hit you five times for about 60 damage each with Acid Storm, and then kind of kill you that way. So Alice died turn 1 on the second go, so I gave her the uh, Undyne Ring for that. And then she died on the third go to Sandstorm because it's an Earth attack. So I ended up giving her the Mother Nature Ring for that as well. So then she could live basically any attack that they could throw at me in turn 1. And that was pretty much what I wanted to do. Usually also, Kanako didn't do it this time, but she usually uh, bomb reloaded on the first turn. Uh, actually she might have done it and she just didn't get a chance. Her, um, her bomb skill is face smash, so it's the wide area uh, strike move that's extremely powerful and is likely just to kill your entire party as well. So lots of just wrecking your face sort of stuff going there. And then Marissa Commando because yeah, uh, that's what I had. So then let's look at the growth tree stuff. Uh, this is the one time I didn't have Amplifying Scroll because I didn't need it. Uh, I wanted maximum induction so that I could get Petrify off reliably. So that's pretty much what Biarcom is set for. Uh, cooldown is minus one, as I said, you should always have one point in the casting tree unless you absolutely need your points otherwise. And I couldn't think of where else to put the points, so I decided I would go with the support magic tree. Probably not the best idea, I probably could have gone into casting so that I could have had casting speed plus 33% and actually uh, cut my stuff down, uh, cut the turns that... It's not even cut the turns, it's that I could try and increase the speed of which my buffs and stuff went off and the uh, status to go ahead of the enemy. So this would have probably been more optimal, but it wasn't necessary. So, you know, there's that. Yomu, uh, Yomu actually can do instant death as well, but it only uh, rarely happens, even with induction up and everything. It doesn't happen very often. But regardless, the katana tree should still be maxed because of that fact that she can instant kill with that. And uh, the crit rate is very, very good as well. Crit plus 10 is so nice with this. And of course the double cast is good as well. And then I had enough points to get 13 into Manusa if I sacrificed everything else. And that's really good because Manusa giving you extra critical hit rate. Critical damage is ridiculously good with Yomu. This is where her power truly comes from at this point. Uh, critical damage plus 33% is it's ridiculous because she already has very high power from critical hit rates. Uh, I think she actually does more damage on crits than most characters. I'm trying to remember why. Uh, I think it's just because of the katana tree here that you know, this critical damage and this one actually do stack, so she basically gets a lot more damage out of critical hits, so any enhancement you can give them is good. That's basically all there is to it. Satori, like I said, uh, Evil Eye is for maxing out her eye tree. So you do need to max that out if you want to use Satori in this fight. There really isn't another reason to use her, so you may as well go ahead and do this. 
Uh, unfortunately, um, instant death is a quick status, so id and trauma don't affect it at all. So her induction is literally the only thing that she can really use to inflict said instant death. And uh, that's where the... Um, where is it? It's uh, self-hypnotism comes in. Now it only says physical attack up, physical defense down here, but it's a lot better than that actually. Um, it cuts both of your defenses, both physical and magic, but it increases your physical attack, your physical, not physical, uh, your magic attack and your induction. So it's a huge buff for Satori and it was the major reason why we were able to get the poison shield formation before. Uh, the rest of the points I went, I put into third eye because uh, 13 points here gives you 30 extra physical attack, which is more damage than I could have gotten out of this tree, I believe. 30, 30 attack for Satori was going to be better than 10% physical damage up, so that kind of worked out nicely enough. And for Sakia, the uh, the knife tree is the interesting one here, so. She's set up obviously a lot differently than she normally would be, and this this is why I went knife instead of two-handed sword because her seven the seven-point skill here increases the chance to inflict status. Now it just says status, so I'm assuming it is all types of status, uh, quick, permanent, and um, variety. So it would makes sense that the knife would increase the chance of inflicting instant death compared to having the two-handed sword. Now I did toy a little bit with the idea of having turn for the worst down the bottom here. 25 points into the murder tree means that your regular attacks will also have a chance of doing instant death, which is fun, uh, it's actually a really cool skill, but I ended up not going with it. And I don't know if I should have gone with it, but when it says normal attacks, I think it means just regular physical without using, uh, not without including skills. It's not physical attacks inflict, it's normal attacks. So I don't think if I use something like Jack the Ludo Bile, it would be able to suddenly inflict instant death. I might be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't work that way. So because of that, I ended up going with the slight extra power. Uh, it's only 10 points here, but I think it ended up being like 20 because of Sakuya's strength and whatnot. And the basically just the uh, the extra power that this gave. Otherwise, I would have also had to sacrifice uh, 10 physical attack from here. So that's probably why it was 20 actually, um, because I'd have had to take this point off or I would have had to take HP plus 15% off. 15% is quite a lot of HP for Sakuya, so I don't know, Like it could have gone either way, but it didn't seem worth it in the end to, uh, to take points off of here. Really, I could have actually gone down to uh, 10 points if I was actually going to go down that route, and I probably could have had... Uh, an extra few points in here uh, probably would have gotten to seven points and then had a couple extra points in here so there were other ways that I could have done this but I just wanted the extra power because again not too much damage coming out here and I wouldn't have been able to get any more unless I put the time stop which I was not prepared to do so there we go uh, Alice, the reason I had three points in here for Mark Kick is that I wanted some sort of damage to be able to come out from Alice in the end. Uh, wasn't really too important, but otherwise they would have just gone to here, uh, or actually I think I had it in the dummy tree before for an extra bomb. Wasn't important at the time, so that's pretty much what we went with. And then Marissa, as you would expect, is set up just for bombs, so all of the magic went to power, so she got bombs plus two, and then plus one from the laser tree, which we shall be getting fairly soon. I do want this as a as a ability, so yep, that is what we we shall be doing. We shall be in two power levels time getting this one here, and then this will really help Marissa's MP out 
because the magic cost of her mystic stuff goes down so that would be fantastic too bad she can't get that yet but in time in time so that was how this fight went and uh, now all we need to do is get the uh, recipes from Akio and we can be done with this part so we have defeated the ladies yes and uh, the two guards of Mora yep they do indeed possess tremendous power but also crippling vulnerability so it wasn't really that hard a battle but if you don't know about it oh boy you're gonna suffer <laughs> trust me so we get a new sword, a uh, lightning sword, which is good. This I think is a water spear, we'll need to see. Uh, Atlas hammer I'm pretty sure was the earth hammer, uh, earth uh, axe. And then we have a new ice shield which is, I want to say it's lightweight but it might not be. And now we actually get some armors for uh, tier 4, uh, technically tier 4 uh, crafting materials. Um, Midnight Robe is Marissa's and then we have Patchouli's, we have the Avian Dress for Aya, and uh, Notori gets one too, as well as Alice, which is quite nice. So let's just take a quick look at those, and then we shall end the part. So. I don't actually have any Yokai Mountain Rocks right now, but I'm I know for a fact that the next stage can actually drop them too. This is the uh, the first time actually that multiple stages have mount of uh, rocks and stuff. But yeah, if you're still using swords, this one's actually pretty good. Um, it does take an electric crystal, which is not something we can make right now. I don't think. Uh, it is possible later on to make crystals from uh, shards, but we don't have the recipe for that and I don't remember when we get it, so yeah, but it strongly resists electric which is fantastic in the next area actually, and uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty powerful and you can get regen in lightning land, but we can't make it because we don't have a crystal. Same with this, oh this is actually earth. Huh. Then what's the Atlas Hammer? Is that... That wouldn't make sense to be water, but... Oh, maybe it's... No, because we just had electric. I don't even know. Apparently this is Earth, though, so... This is also Earth. Okay. Supposedly we have two Earth weapons out now. Whatever. That's that's fine. These are quite expensive in terms of rocks to make... Uh, to, you know, basic synthesis materials, though. Three per part is expensive for the right now, so... I don't know, if you've got a whole bunch of them, then maybe you could make one, but not for me at the moment. Uh, yeah, the Ice Heart Shield's actually a mid-tier shield. This one is not bad, actually. Uh, 138 defense, does defend against water as well, 36% chance to work, pretty nice. Probably not going to make it, but you know, it's not the most expensive of things to make, so... If you have an extra water shard, which I don't because I used it for something else, then yeah, it's pretty good to pretty good to make. So then we have the armors for people. So Marissa gets two bombs on her armor, so we'll probably try and make this at some point because that's really good. Uh, two bombs on Marissa using sparks or even her astronomy spells. It actually makes her astronomy spells sort of viable if you have uh, bomb, uh, extra bombs for them and stuff. Especially uh, Mad Blizzard, I think it was, that was the widespread one. That uh, That's quite nice at this point. And then, what else we got? We have Patchouli for 20% magic reflect and one bomb. It's not too bad. Likely won't make it though, because I think it's a bit superfluous, but uh, reflecting magic is quite strong. Too bad it doesn't like reflect physical or something, that'd be really fun, but yeah, that's that's whatever. So then the avian dress, this is one I would like to try and make at some point, but actually did the rest of these need, uh, no that just needs your kind of mountain rock. Yeah, so apparently, spoilers, the tier 5 thing is a meteorite, so yeah, 
Good job, Aya. Spoiling the freaking game. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, so she gets 20 evasion on this armor. is quite good if you're still trying to use Aya. And uh, plus one bomb works with the way that she plays. So definitely would want to make this if only for the fact of as a commander having extra bombs is really good. So yeah, there, there's that. Yeah, why does Ayas take a meteorite and everybody else takes Yokai Mountain Rock? That doesn't make sense. Uh, Notori's one is actually really, really good. Uh, very good against blind. Perfect dodge, 15%. That's ridiculous. 15% uh, of the time you just dodge any physical attack that comes your way. That's stupid good. Uh, it's actually, actually very worthwhile making and I might want to try and make that. Um, Chaser damage up is also quite nice if you use a party that has uh, Patchouli and Marissa in it, as we have seen before. Or you can actually use it with Biakaran as well, because Biakaran's elemental weapon can turn a physical attacker into an elemental physical attacker. So you could use that with, say, Yomu and her Azura stance, and then you could have an AoE physical attacker which you can chase with Notori. Possibly then rounding out the party a bit with patchouli for uh, multi-target element stuff as well. And you get extra damage off said chases because of her armor. So that's really good. Uh, who else did we get one? I think Alice was the only other one that got one. So Alice gets good paralysis resistance and uh, plus one bomb. The lives, Alice doesn't die very often. So good magic defense though. It's a solid armor. The magic defense is actually good because Alice doesn't have any natural defense that way. So, yeah, pretty good armor, but probably won't be made just because of the amount of stuff that it would take. I mean, it's really good, but resources are not infinite. If I had unlimited resources to be making these things, then I would sure as hell make this. But I don't, therefore I probably won't. So that's that. That is the Yorkai Mountain fully finished. So next time we're going into heaven, right? Because that is the next destination. So this has been Gamer Cow playing Toho, the genius of Sapphiros, and next time Bava Arga. Oh boy, this place is a thing. See you guys next time.